Check, check. Check, 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 check. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2024 Volleyball League of America East Division Cup semifinals from just outside Albany, New York. My name's Rob St. Clair, bringing you a banger a classic Tier 1 East Division matchup between the Boston Bounce in white and purple on the far side is the Northeast Force in white and blue on the near side. This is now a wide open tournament, which we'll certainly talk about. And it's Boston on the far side taking advantage of a mishandled ball on the Northeast side. And they get on the board first. Best three out of five sets to go to the final, to go to the East Division Cup final to take on the DC Dynasty, yes. A surprising result, an upset this morning. The DC Dynasty, the eighth seed in the tournament, upset the number one seed, the defending champion, Team LVC. Three sets to none. So the door is wide open for one of these two teams to advance to the final to take on the DC Dynasty. Actually, Boston and the Dynasty played yesterday in pool play with Boston winning 15-13 in the fifth. Ball is still alive. And now sent back over as a free ball. Oh no, miscommunication there though. Some different starting lineups that we've seen from both these teams throughout the weekend right now. Uh, the Northeast Force going with Mason William Matos, et cetera, and James Haig at opposite. Uh, Haig is, we've often, often seen him this year at outside hitter. Looks like Rafa Anthony in the middle. We'll see who the second one will be. Ryan Schickling and Garrett Minyard are the outside hitters, and Cam Roth is the libero. Roth makes a play right there. Transition chance. Minyard on the right side through a tiny seam in the block. On the Boston side, on the far side of the net, it's Alex Raskin, number 23, who gets the start at setter. Greg Woods at opposite, Ryan Love and Jeff Vautrin at outside hitters. Uh, Rafa Burgos is in the middle right now. We'll see who the other one is. And Lexi De La Cruz at libero. Good fix there by William Matos, but on a free ball chance, wow, what a dig. Amazing touch by Cam Roth. Schickling down the line, rally of the match right there so far. No, it's early, but that is a tone setter. Brilliant defense, Cam Roth, number seven in black. For the Northeast Forest out of Norwalk, Connecticut. 
on the near side of your screen. Ryan Love comes up short that time out of the back row, 4-4. Four, four. James Haig back to serve. The outside hitter sort of turned opposite for this match. He's 24 years of age out of NYU. Good arm on him. Nice serve there. Oh, but right on top of the net of the two-handed jam by Alex Raskin, the physical left-handed setter out of the University of Michigan for the Boston Bounce. Ball may have been going out of bounds, overpassed. Love, cross court, Roth is there. Nice move again. Schickling ripped into the angle against two blockers. Another outstanding dig by Cam Roth. And the Northeast Force turn it into a point immediately. They've uh, the Force really resurrecting their season this weekend. 3-0 uh, yesterday in three matches, took home eight points. And uh, although they, they struggle to be terminal on the outside sometimes in long rallies, that, uh, that is pretty terminal right there. And so is that block. That's Deshaun Graham. And combining with the setter, Mason William Matos. And uh, Ryan Schickling, a nice pickup for the Northeast Force this year. Outside uh, hitter out of UC San Diego. Back to serve. <laughs> nice, I like that play. Got to, had to move my commentary table a bit so I could see around the northeast bench. And, uh, it's a kill for Alex Raskin, again, the front court left-handed setter for Boston in that rotation. Nice serve there by Raskin as well. Raskin has uh, done a really good job throughout this weekend, throughout this season, throughout his bounce career, really. I think this is at least his third year playing for him. 
Uh, coming in off the bench and putting in solid left-handed jump spin serves. Uh, nice high swing there by Garrett Minyard, number six in white and blue, the founder and owner of the Northeast Force franchise. Him and his wife, Kat, run the Northeast Volleyball Club. Just built a new facility in Connecticut that hopefully the VLA will be at very, very soon. Good triple block there set up by the force. Rafa Anthony right in the middle of it. Mason William Matos out of New Jersey Institute of Technology, number five here, the lefty setter serving for the force. It's been a good pickup for them as well this season. Force play in a very, very tough division, arguably the hardest in the league. Started the season one and seven. Actually, they started 0-7 before grabbing their first win of the year in Boston against this Boston Bounce team and haven't looked back. They're right now on a four-match win streak. Tough swing there by Hay, got a system, misses the court and the hands. Ryan Love will go back to serve. The outside hitter out of Wentworth Institute of Technology, who is uh, pretty recently ranked number one in the country in NCAA Division III men's ball. Wow, somehow Haig was able to power that ball through the block of Boston. I'm, not sure where that went. Maybe like underneath the arms of Greg Woods. Greg Woods there off the block of Schickling. I thought that might have caught a piece of him on its way out, but no, a kill for number eight in white and purple on the far side. Greg Woods, the opposite out of Springfield. He and Boston setter Colin Ritter joined us on the broadcast yesterday during VLA All Day and held it down for about an hour and a half. Told a bunch of good stories. It was great having those guys on. Good cover there. Oh, what a miscommunication. Roth and William Matos both there. Boston back within one here. Tight pass and dunk to the floor with one hand by Nick Kasperzak. Number 22 in white for Boston on the far side. Tied up at 13. Nice shot there, wow, that, that fell in bounds, no defenders. Yeah, because the middle blocker was back there playing defense. Good read there by Schickling to chop that one off four to four. Wow, that ball is punished down the line by Greg Woods. If you've watched the East Division this year, you have seen a lot of that. Boston comes into the weekend at four and four, won both their matches yesterday. They sit right now at six and four on the season, including a win and five over the DC Dynasty yesterday morning, who they're hoping 
to see in the final if they can win this match. Owner versus owner right there. Jeff Vautrin for Boston against Garrett Minyard for the Northeast Force. And in transition, they take advantage of the free ball. Kasper Zak with the kill in the middle. Jeff Vautrin, number 17 on the far side. The head coach at his alma mater, LaSalle University. Another good New England Division III program. Vautrin founded the Boston Bounce in 2021. They were promptly promoted to the Tier 1 level uh, the following season. This is their third year playing in the VLA Tier 1, finished up runner-up in the playoffs last year, lost in the season championship match to Team LVC. Colin Ritter, one of the usual Boston starters at setter. Uh, this match in off the bench is a serving sub, but he misses it wide, uncharacteristic. So he'll go back to the bench. Uh, Ritter and Vautrin both were named first team all VLA last season after going all the way to the final. Both outstanding years for both of those guys. Ooh, pretty good dig there by the Sean Graham, the middle blocker for Force. Raskin recycles off the hands of Minyard. Now Love slowed down, but it falls. Minyard can't get there in time. Pretty good rally there. So getting interesting here late in the first set, 18-17 bounce. This is the fifth meeting of the season between these two teams. Bounce leads the season series so far, three matches to one. Play that stray volleyball. Interrupted minion serve routine 1919. Anybody's game here in the first. Nice cross court rip there by Woods on the right side for Boston.
Nice turn there by Kasprzak in the middle for Boston to take the lead. Oh, wait a minute. That ball is called out of bounds. Uh, overruled by the up official. Line judge called it in. Uh, up official disagreed. Didn't think that caught a piece of the sideline, so the force catches a break, potentially. They lead 21-20, and they put Blake Hogan back up outside hitter in as a serve specialist here. Ooh, easy roll shot there by Woods. Two-point lead chance here for Schickling, but he stuffs straight down. Huge block by Woods and Kasperzak. Yeah, I think Schickling just kind of wanted the, the high flat recycle there. That ball was swallowed whole by the Boston block. We're tied up at 21. Woods comes up short on the serve. First to 25, and gotta be two points clear to take the first set of the semifinal match. Boston looking to go to the East Division Cup final for the second time. They made it there in 2022. They lost 3-0 to Cleveland. William Matos makes a play. He's going to come back over as a free ball. Chance for a two-point lead here. Schickling cross court. De La Cruz makes a play. But Love can't track it down. 23-21 Northeast. On James Haig's serve. He'll go back again now with a full green light. But after this timeout. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, uh, welcome in behind my little broadcast table. Uh, I'm Rob St. Clair here. Actually, yeah, there we go. There I am. Uh, live from the East Division Cup and an insane tournament. Fantastic day yesterday, uh, full of matches. I think we played 11 matches yesterday. Uh, great stuff, three five setters, a uh, bunch of drama. And then, uh, speaking of drama, we really got it underway this morning. That, that DC Dynasty win over Team LVC, the reigning champs, and kind of a team that's dominated the VLA over the past two years, two or three years. Uh, get swept in the semifinal at home. That was a big moment, a uh, big turning point, kind of a big milestone for this season. Uh, DC Dynasty making a big statement. Now the door open for uh, the three remaining teams alive in this tournament to grab what will be their first Divisional Cup Series win ever. Uh, the DC Dynasty will await the winner of this one, and Boston and the Northeast Force both with a heck of a lot to play for. Uh, that a cup win in this event for one of these two tier one teams would clinch a playoff spot automatically. So a lot on the line. Go back here to action as James Haig serves with a two point lead. Wow, what a blast by Greg Woods. Out of the back row, that ball was destroyed. Emphatic first ball side out there for the bounce. Schickling, pretty easy roll shot. Great chance here for Woods for the tie. Rolled through the block, kept alive. William Matos, the, the left-handed setter, takes a swing. He missed it out of bounds, but a net touch against the Boston block. A net violation is called against Boston, and they do not agree. So as it stands, Northeast has a set point here at 24-22. It'll be Ryan Schickling to serve. Still work to be done for both teams. A oh, pretty nice touch there by Minyard off the block, but it falls on the Northeast side. So one set point saved, and now uh, this is the pivot. And this is the pivotal moment right here. Boston needs a point on this serve to force overtime. Nick Kasperzak, the middle, will have the honors after we clean up the floor on the northeast side. 
I'm trying to think back and see if any uh, how many substitutions Boston has used in this set. I know they put Ritter in and out as a serving sub earlier. This might be a moment to put a guy in off the bench if you have confidence in a server. Got to get this point here if you're both teams. This is Force's best chance to win the set inside out right here. Kasperzak to serve. Float serves easily inbounds. Minyard for the win is stuffed straight down. Alex Raskin, the Boston setter, with a huge move to take the line away, and we've got overtime. Okay. What a moment. 24 24. First to get two points clear takes the first set. Can Northeast respond? Not yet. That ball badly under set to Deshaun Graham. Connection not there. And now the bounce has a set point out of seemingly nowhere. And uh, predictably a timeout for the force. Kasperzak will serve for the set for Boston. When we come back, what a turnaround this could be in the first set. Set point Boston right here out of the timeout. They're on a 2 nothing run. If they can make it three on Nick Kasperzak's serve, set number one is theirs. Forcing the inside out to keep overtime going. Graham in the middle is rejected by Burgos. Unbelievable, the Boston bounce. Come back late to steal set number one. A four to nothing run. Down 24-22, they got a side out and three points in a row on Nick Kasperzak's serve to take it 26-24. What a start to this semifinal match that is. All right, good question in the chat. I like this, Craig. Uh, talking about points and how the points work and how points are earned. So uh, the beautiful thing about these VLA Cup Series tournaments is that every match matters. 
not only to advance in the tournament, but uh, every single match, whether it's pool play, bracket, consolation, whatever, every match counts for p full point value for the tier one standings, for tier two standings, and tier two, like year over year cumulative promotion, all that, every match matters. So the, the, the way the breakdown works, and you can see all this on the website, is that if you win a match three to zero or three to one, you get three points. If you win a match three to two, you get two points. If you lose a match two to three, you get one point. If you lose a match zero three or one three, you get nothing. But uh, a, an interesting wrinkle uh, unique to the VLA, because that point system, as I just described, is uh, used all over the volleyball world. But uh, a wrinkle here in the VLA is if you are a tier two team and you play and earn points against a tier one team, you get one additional point than you would have otherwise. So in the example from this morning, the DC Dynasty, a Tier 2 team, beating the New York Legion, a Team LVC, a Tier 1 team, beating them 3-0, to zero, the Dynasty actually gets four points from that win, which is amazing. Excellent run there by Jeff Vautrin out of the back row to start set number two with authority. And uh, another interesting thing, just kind of about how points work. Obviously, the points will de determine the Tier 1 teams, who makes the playoffs. Uh, six of the eight Tier 1 teams will make the playoffs in early June this year. But also, Tier 2-wise, it's a big year for the races for promotion. Uh, there are spots up for grabs in men's Tier 1 based on how many cumulative points a Tier 2 team has. Depending on what division you're in, East, West, or Central, there are different point targets that you're trying to reach. We already know the Dallas Dogs in the West, in Tier 2 West, uh, they have received an offer of promotion to Men's Tier 1 next year. And there's a one, maybe two teams that are eligible in the Central. Uh, we're, we're probably not going to get any teams from the East promoted this year, but uh, both points and cup tournament wins contribute towards promotion. So if you win a VLA Cup Series tournament, that counts as well like the River City Flow did at the Central Cup a few weeks ago. Uh, another question. Yes, I will absolutely be covering uh, the International Summer, big summer with Volleyball Nations League and the Olympics. Uh, I have a channel called Volleyball Source. They'll be covering all that. So if you like the international game, go check us out at Volleyball Source on YouTube. And yes, in the chat, uh, my understanding is that the Northeast Force starting setter's name is Mason William Matos. How I have it written down is that William Matos hyphenated is his surname. I know his first name is Mason. That ball is, no, that, I disagree with this call. I think that was definitely touched by the block of Minyard. I think the force is going to get away with this, but uh, so often when you see a ball hit in the top part of the tape with a blocker there, as much as the blocker might like to say that he or she didn't touch that ball, it so often is the case where the ball did trickle over the net and touch the blocker. I'm pretty sure that one did touch Minyard, so the force catch a break, but then they give it right back on a float service air wide. Foot fault called against Greg Wood, stepping on the service line.
Nice cross-court rip right there by Jeff Vautrin. I think first team all VLA two seasons in a row, if I'm not mistaken, both 2022 and 23. Boston looking to make the playoffs for their third consecutive year. They're a two for two so far the last two years. 100% playoff appearance rate as a tier one franchise. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Might be the only team that can say that. Nice wrist away swing right there by Kasperzak. I love that play, a uh, middle from either rotation five or rotation two from his own right sideline. Working that ball back wrist away against his body's momentum. I love that play. And uh, maybe that's because I'm a former middle blocker who used to hit that shot all the time. May have been going out of bounds off the block, but Love now can have a swing against two blockers. Roth is there. And pretty good high flat shot off the edge of the block of Raskin. A kill for Ryan Chickling. Perfect pass, that ball's in right on the sideline. Yep, good call. Rafa Burgos, number 15 in white on the near side. Middle blocker out of Puerto Rico. Tags the sideline, wrist away. Pretty good service pressure by Raskin. That ball is saved by Matos. But now a free ball chance. Excellent scoop by Minyard, but that's not coming back. Love takes advantage of some open space down the line. And let's see, I want to make sure we're on the same page here as far as score. I'm showing 8-8 eight, eight in the house. We'll get that checked on. Thanks for your questions in the live chat, by the way. Uh, keep them coming if I can answer anything about the VLA for you. All right, got the score corrected at 10 serving eight. Schickling for the Northeast Force on the far side. Serving against Boston, rotation one receive. The ball is through the block of Graham. Just a tiny bit too late to press over for that one. Ryan Love back to serve. An outstanding three surface player. Really good on the hard court, on the beach, and on the grass. Good read there, Burgos all over that one with Woods there as well. Love a right side blocker that helps the middle block the 31. Nowhere for Graham to go that time, or we're tied up at 10.
excellent high swing that time by Deshaun Graham, just using that physicality to climb the ladder and go over the block. Oh, thanks for that point in the chat. This is That's great information. Uh, Rafa Burgos and Mason Matos were teammates in the national team pipeline system for the Dominican Republic. I didn't know that. I had the pleasure of uh, calling the Men's Norseca Continental Championship last September uh, where the Dominican Republic finished fourth. That team was pretty good and pretty young, so maybe these guys can get in the mix. Ooh, that is off the head of Minyard. Right in the face, I believe, and he is going to have to take some time to shake that one off. Excellent dig by Roth, but Rafa Anthony can't scoop it out of the net there. Man, I'm blown away. This uh, I mean, We love being here at the Impact Athletics Center in upstate New York. I will say the, the ground transmission of vibrations is higher than I've ever seen. Every tiny little footstep or bounce of a ball anywhere in the gym results in our camera vibrating, so I apologize about that, but... There's really nothing we can do about it, unfortunately. Minyard runs it down, but one hand sends it out of bounds. Uh, good question. Yeah, off the ceiling is in play this tournament. We made that decision yesterday morning. We, uh, our ceiling rules in the VLA are facility dependent. And uh, these ceilings are pretty high, but there are a couple basketball hoops up there. And just for the sake of consistency and uh, not having to judge what part of the ceiling anything hits, we decided to just play everything off the ceiling in the, the style of the USA Volleyball rules. So if it's off the ceiling and still on your side, you can play it. But off the ceiling and over the net is out of bounds. Uh, anything off the back wall, that curtain you see at the back there or off like the, the railings of the balcony, we've got a bunch of spectators up there watching. That is considered the wall. That's out of bounds as well. Really nice looking first ball side out there for the force. James Haig putting that excellent arm to use on the right side. Touched on its way out of bounds. Man, Boston having some success. This is about the same rotation as the run that they went on to win set one with Nick Kasperzak serving. Really trying to work deep on Garrett Minyard's hands. Right now that's deep position six. Sort of trying to throw that ball over his head and drop it on the baseline. Yeah, similar serve there. Handled it a little bit better. Kasperzak, the middle blocker, makes a play on defense. Love, power tip down the line is... 
off the ceiling. Okay, good effort by the force to chase that down. But uh, deflected off the ceiling on its way back over. And we've got a forced timeout, I believe. Uh, Craig in the chat, yes, absolutely. Anybody who's uh, been around the VLA for a few years knows that um, I am very open and willing to accept any gear from any of the teams. So yeah, if you got some beautiful Cherry Blossom DC Dynasty gear, I would love some. That would be fantastic. Hopefully the Dynasty boys are planning on getting out to the VLA Cup. That will be the league's next big event. Well, next event, period. We've got about a month, a little month and a half off after this event before the VLA Cup in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, really, really excited for that event. Should probably break the record for largest event in VLA history. If I remember right, last year we had 36 teams total. I think last year we had eight men's tier one, 28, no, eight men's tier one, 20 men's tier two, and eight women's. Uh, we, the team registration isn't totally complete yet for Madison, but we're looking at maybe 36 men's and 12 women's, which would be amazing. So uh, we're excited to head to Wisconsin for that brand new uh, Madtown Juniors facility. And Madison will be a great host for us. So um, mark your calendars for that. I believe that's the weekend of May 18th. Pretty good dig there by Matos out of the back row. And put away by Schickling. Okay, Northeast Force. Turning a scramble. Into an out-of-system point. That's something that uh, I was definitely looking at in their games yesterday. Was, uh, the, the Force is a good defensive team. They touch a lot of balls. But uh, how often can they turn those digs into legitimate swing chances? Northeast Force yesterday beat the Atlanta Bobcats 3-0. They beat the New York Lost Travelers 3-1. Then they beat the Niagara Frontiersmen 3-2 in the quarterfinal. Boston Bounds yesterday beat the D.C. Dynasty in five, then beat the Colorado Kingsmen in a sweep. And they got a bye directly to the semifinals here. Nice high flat swing off the fingertips there by Woods. Raskin comes up short on the serve that time, but Boston in a pretty good position, up three. And up one set to none. Rotation one receive here with Woods and Love switched on the wings versus where they typically attack from. Pretty good play by Graham. Out of system swing coming here on the left side. Down the line dug by Raskin. Nice challenge there by Ryan Love. That is such a good shot. He was uh, directly inside of a double block. Knew it. Basically hit that ball upwards. And hoped for the best as far as the deflection he was going to get. And he got lucky. It was the best he could do. It hit the right shot. And it paid off. Now Love back to serve. Matos rattles that one through the block. This is going to have to come over as a free ball because of where De La Cruz set that ball from. Oh, the hang time. Look at that block from Burgos and Woods. Uh, tipping the ball over Greg Woods is not an advisable choice. I will tell everyone in the VLA that right now. If you think you can hang an off-speed shot over number eight in White's hands long enough for him to not block that ball, uh, think again. Dude's got some hang time. Substitution in here for the Northeast Force. Bailey checking number 22 in white and blue on the far side. 
in an outside hitter gets the ball immediately and terminates it off the block and out of bounds. Aaron Jesse, the backup libero, in off the bench for the force to serve this ball, but no stopping that. What a textbook deep cross-court swing by Jeff Vautrin. So now the force service sub is undone, and the bounce put in one of their own. Backup libero Jordan Aprea, number seven. 22-17 Boston looking to go up two sets to none in this semifinal. Easy roll shot there from Checky Doug. One-handed set to Love. Comes up short. And Boston will wish they connected better on that, but no harm done given the scoreboard where it is. But we saw Boston have to make a comeback to win set one. Does the force have one in them right now? Uh, Matos back to serve. Nice put away there by Kasperzak off the block and the defense. Uh, brand new looks as far as jerseys this year for both of these teams. Big shout out to Novice Clothing Company from right here in Albany, New York. The official outfitter of all of our Tier 1 teams. What a set by Raskin. Getting up for that tight ball and flicking it out to Vautrin who pounds it through the block. And that brings up set point bounce. 24-18, Greg Woods with the honors. Uh, the force on the far side searching for some answers here. De La Cruz makes the play on defense. Woods for the set out of the back row. A little late to that ball and comes up short. But no harm done. Still plenty of chances inside out. The Boston bounce to win this second set. Kasperzak having himself a really nice match, and he's up and available there for Raskin in set number two. Goes to the Boston bounce, 25-19. So a 2-0 lead in, uh, for the Boston bounce against the Northeast Forces, their fifth matchup of the year. Boston looking to go 4-1 against their division rival. See if they can do it in set number three when we come back in just a minute.
set number three underway here in our second semifinal at the VLA East Division Cup. Rob St. Clair with you live on the VLA YouTube channel from just outside Albany, New York. Northeast Force on the near side in white and blue trail the Boston bounce. Two sets to none. Yeah, we got a couple lineup changes on the fourth side. Yeah, at least one notable one, Emilio Renzulli, or Mo as they call him, number 18 in white and blue on the near side. The big physical lefty in at opposite. And uh, Bailey Checky, number 22, who came in and set to an outside hitter, remains in here in set three. That ball right on top of the net, and Woods waited for it to get to the plane and dunked it with two hands. Good service pressure there from Love. Wow, what a block by Vautrin. Fantastic reach out to the line by number 17 in white and purple. Nice shot down the line there by Renzulli. Uh, yeah, Manny in the chat, I agree. I would like to be able to give you a lot more information. Problem is uh, I'm, I'm running two entire broadcasts and an entire tournament by myself, and I'm fighting off a bit of a cold here, so I'm struggling my way through calling some games. I'll uh, be a little more active in the final, or you can check on the VLA website. Uh, the VLA website is an excellent resource. There's a ton of information there. Uh, every team has got their roster posted with all the info about all the athletes. So definitely give that a look. Not a good misconnection there from Matos to Anthony. I'm a little surprised. We haven't seen any of Ryan Thomas, the one of the most unique players in the league. A left-handed middle blocker is pretty vicious in the offensive game. I think uh, the force could use a bit of a mix-up in the middle position. We'll see if we see that. Another misconnection there, the Anthony. Wow. And Vatran to make him pay. Actually tips that ball out of bounds down the line. So the force catch a break there. Amazing cover off the block by Schickling, but now a free ball chance for the Forest. Renzulli pounded down the line. First look at number 18, white and blue. In my opinion, this uh, this change took too long. Renzulli really impressed me yesterday and uh, gives some terminal firepower on the right side that the Force desperately needs, in my opinion. Oh, hey, serve. Look at that. Anthony tags the shoulder of Ryan Love. He wasn't sure if that serve was going out of bounds or not. Rafa Anthony from Bridgetown Barbados by way of NJIT. Gets credit for the ace serve there. Uh, no luck that time though.
Wow, great cover. No double contact called. Chance here for Schickling. Kasperzak is there. Vautrin off the edge of the block of Graham and out of bounds. That is a miracle point won by the Boston Bounce. So it's been a topic of conversation a good bit this year and just kind of all, all around North American volleyball. The rule about the double contact call in setting, uh, mostly because the NCAA Women's Volleyball Committee has decided they're taking that call out of the game this upcoming season. And uh, I've made a bunch of videos on Instagram on this subject because the VLA was the first league to do this. We put, a, we put that same rule in at the league's inception in late 2019 and ever since we've been playing, since 2020, we've had this rule in place. And the way it, it, it the, the simplest way to understand it is, as far as overhead setting goes, if uh, the ball is played in one motion and the ball stays on the same team's side of the net, then the double contact is never going to be called. No matter how gross it might come out, if it's one motion and the ball stays on the same team's side, we will never call the double contact. The reason why I brought it up with that other play, though, is if you send the ball over to the other side of the net, then the official can still use their judgment to potentially call a double contact. But if it stays on your side, uh, never going to call it. That's because uh, no team ever gains an advantage from a poorly set ball. As long as it's one motion and it's not caught or thrown, which would be a carry, it's a different call entirely. Pretty nice chop there by Schickling down the line. That ball's in for sure. Oh, sure enough, I called for it a few points ago. Ryan Thomas, number 23 in white and blue is in for the Northeast Force at the middle blocker spot. A left-handed middle attacker, keep an eye out for that. Nothing he can do though to stop Kasperzak that time. He's having himself a match, man. Nick Kasperzak, only 23 years of age from Endicott College in New England. First look at Thomas on offense. Uh, did he reach over the net there? No. Ball is in the plane of the net. And so when you have a left-handed middle attacker, that really reverses the, really basically everything you can do on offense is uh, you have to think of it in reverse. So when Thomas wants to run a play to that gap spot or the 31 spot, he has to basically run it like a slide. Jump off his right foot as his last step and rotate but he can also run behind the center off of two feet. This creates some really different angles that are difficult to block because you never see left-handed middles. Good swing there on the outside for Boston by Love. Pretty good dig there from Vautrin. Love sends it over as a free ball. Renzulli's out of the offense. Checky with the offhand hand gets it recycled on his side. Checky again is stuffed straight down by Woods. Whoa. Man, Greg Woods, he blocked that ball so straight down that the ball hit the net on the northeast side. That's insane. Greg Woods having himself a really nice tournament. Boston is looking to go to the final for a rematch with the DC Dynasty, who they beat 15-13 in the fifth in the first match of the tournament yesterday morning. Clean put away by Burgos in the middle for Boston. It's 13-9 and a Northeast timeout.
Ooh, Alex Raskin gets a tape trickler ace out of the timeout. That is demoralizing for the Northeast Force. Nothing really they can do about it, though. Was touched. But wow, what a play by Raskin. Get up high, fake attack, and he can take a swing with the left hand as we've seen. Drew a blocker and gave it to Woods on the left with a pretty much wide open net. It was a nice play all the way around. And no problem there for Greg Woods. Northeast just does not have an answer for number eight right now. And uh, Boston puts in Jordan Aprea as a serving sub again. It is 17 to 11. Unless uh, something pretty drastic changes, it's looking right now like we might have a rematch in the final Boston versus DC. And. Uh, Funny enough, actually, that'll be the second year in a row in this building that we have a very similar pattern. Last year, in the first match on Saturday morning of the tournament, uh, Team LVC played the Kentucky Unicorns in pool play. Then the following day, uh, in the championship match, Team LVC took on the Kentucky Unicorns again. This tournament here, uh, same gym, same court even. Uh, the Boston Bounce took on the DC Dynasty in the first match Saturday morning. Boston gets this done. They've got a free ball chance here. Love out of the back row came up short, though. Boston gets this done. Uh, we've got the exact same thing. They will take on the team that they saw first thing yesterday morning, but this time with the cup on the line. We've got the trophy, by the way. I'm ready to give it out later this afternoon. Ooh, Greg Woods killing him with kindness. You don't see him go off speed all that often. There's Thomas, the left-handed middle. Good dig, though, by De La Cruz. It's chased down and sent back over as a free ball. Oh, and a missed connection there. I'm not sure who that ball was intended for, either Thomas or Renzulli. Got three lefties on the court right now for the force. 
Thomas Renzulli and Matos the setter. Repeat set there to Thomas, good enough to score. Ryan Thomas, 30 years of age, from Port of Spain, Trinidad, in a southern Caribbean island. Oh my goodness, look at that. Emilia Renzulli float serve tags the baseline. Force within three, this is definitely not over yet. Blocked by Matos. That deflected off of Vatran on its way out of bounds. The force is within two. What a comeback this might be. All just on a pretty benign looking float serve from Emilio Renzulli. Where does Boston go to side out this rotation? Maybe Woods out of the back row? Let's see. Ooh, Kasperzak in the middle. That ball set a little too high. Back to Boston though. Raskin is blocked and gets his own rebound. Oh, and what, basically a swing and a miss there. What on earth is happening to the Boston bounce? They led by as many as six. It is a one point game here in the third set. Time out Boston, okay. I thought this might be a foregone conclusion about five minutes ago, not anymore. Big point right here out of the timeout. Renzulli continuing to serve. Boston needs to reestablish a little bit of control here in their side out offense, and they do with a bomb by Nick Kasperzak in the middle, just what the doctor ordered. Zuli out of the back row here. Wow, nice pace on that ball. Challenging angle against two blockers. Like I was saying, I think it was uh, a little overdue for Renzuli to enter this match. And he's definitely made an impact here in the third set. And he's having a good time doing it. Here's Schickling back to serve. Now it still leads by one. Looking to go back up by two here. Love tipped over the top and down. 
Defenders converging for the force, but none of them can get underneath it. Oh, this is a free ball at best. A pretty good scramble, but now great chance. Love slowed down. Renzulli is there. Checky dug by Kasperzak, the middle blocker. Vatran out of the back row, blocked off the head of Burgos and still alive. Renzulli again. Woods is there right on the net. Thomas dug by Love. This has to come over, and it does. Crazy rally. Thomas. Dug again by Kasperzak. Is this ball hittable? No. Free ball sent. Renzulli out of bounds out of the back row. Boston takes a crazy point. Oh my goodness. And not only do they take a crazy point, but they go back up by three. 22 to 19. That was wild. Time out force, at the very least, just to catch their breath here. Out of the timeout, Kasperzak to serve for Boston on the far side. Must, must side out this point if you're the Northeast Force. Thomas, pretty good dig by Woods, but he gets his own rebound on top of the net. And hammers it to the floor to get back within two. And now Thomas himself will go back to serve. He's got a pretty scary left-handed jump spinner, but it is a little bit error prone. Is he going to... Let's see, what are we... Okay, service specialist. I'm uh, not super surprised. I like this move. Aaron Jesse, the backup libero, number one, in to serve and play some defense for the force here. Just going to keep a float serve and play and try to get a touch on defense. Not a great pass by Love. Good touch by Jesse, doing his job off the bench. Checky gets the recycle, but Jesse in coverage. Can't quite keep it inside the antenna. So 23-20 Boston. Jesse will go back to the bench. Ooh, Raskin just barely missed the baseline. Good call though, that ball is out of bounds. Love on the right side, ripped cross court. And that brings up match point for the Boston Bounce. They led pretty big midway through this third set. The Northeast Force made a comeback, got within one, but now it's Ryan Love with three match points to go to the East Division Cup final. Pretty good serve down the line. Shecky with a very difficult play, sends over a free ball. Raskin, Burgos for the match, puts it away, no problem. And sure enough, ladies and gentlemen, we have a rematch set for the final. The Boston Bounce advances past their East Division rival, the Northeast Force, to take on the DC Dynasty for the East Division Cup trophy.
So, what we know now is that coming up next on this court, we're going to have a consolation match for fifth place between the New York Lost Travelers and the Niagara Frontiersmen. And after that match will be the final, the DC Dynasty versus the Boston Bounce. Uh, all that will be updated on the VLA website here momentarily. But uh, for now, we thank you all very much for watching this semifinal match on the YouTube channel. We will be back in a couple hours, or at least I will be back in a couple hours for the final. We've got one more round of consolation games to go. Just as an appetizer for the championship match, DC versus Boston coming up in a couple hours. Thanks very much for watching.